can text a couple more people to say it's okay to join. Here we go. Hey, and we have it, folks. Oh my God, I'm so excited. Uh, yay, here we go, let me start this up. Okay, welcome <laughs> to the live studio audience goes wild from 60 feet across the room. So wonderful to be here with all of you. Oh my goodness. Um, as I've said with these, this is literally live from my living room. I just realized we needed more sexual health plus COVID-19 data um, going out there. And so I thought that I would put this up. And so I am going to, I don't know if I can have my chat up here. Like I said, I've literally just like done this on the fly. Not a lot of preparing, things like that putting it out so that we have some fun and talk about that. So if you joined us last time, what we talked about was dating, all these kinds of things. So we're going to pick up from there. And so I thought it'd be good to talk a little bit about the P industry. And when I said that, a friend, you know who he is too, a friend from college who didn't go to college with us, but lived in the apartment that we oh, all, yeah, yeah. exactly, yeah. So anyway, so live studio audience includes my cats, Fitzy, Catsby and Maggles, who yes. is a neighbor who is sitting way across the room so that I am not completely on my own during these crazy ass times. We take turns cooking dinner for each other. Uh, but yeah, so it is so good to be here. And like I said, I don't really do a lot of promo for these. This is more like testing grounds. And so we have the trial just to make sure that we can get the equipment up last week. This week, we're just going a little bit further with that to keep on going with it. And um, see how everything goes. And so I am going to dump straight in. This is quick and dirty. It is already, we're a little bit below, beyond the time that we we're going to start. And so this is probably going to wrap within like 20 minutes. This is not a super long kind of get together. It's just a time for me to come from my living room out into the camera and share some info about sexual health and COVID-19. Uh, so start the show. So a friend from college, when I said we're going to talk a little bit about the pee industry, he was like the, oh, I said porn, porn. Thank you for talking a little bit about the porn industry. Uh, one of the things I thought was pretty exciting is that everybody is stuck at home and bored and things like that, but people are finding creative ways to have fun. You've all seen the videos of the Italians um, singing to each other from their balconies, which is fantastic. People clapping. Um, for the healthcare workers um, at certain times around the globe. I saw Amsterdam today, which was fantastic to watch that. And of course, people saying, yay for clapping, but also vote for people who believe in science and public health and all of those wonderful things so that we don't have these kinds of pandemics. And or if we do have them, we have very smart, resilient, evidence-based responses to them so that we're using drugs that actually work uh, we're reminding people to close businesses and close things so we have a physical distancing, uh, which is good. And so all of that stuff has been good. But the other thing that I want to say about people being home is that we know that people are actually spending more time watching porn. There have been amazing numbers coming out about the number of people who are watching pornography and just having a fun time, seeing different things on screen and things like that, which is a lot of fun. Uh, funny, I, I just said things like that, total random. I don't do live video like this ever. Usually when I'm speaking, it's like on a stage for a campus or for a corporation or for a company or something like that. So I already know kind of here are the key points that I want to hit. Here's why I'm here. I'm being brought in to do this thing. Or I'm doing storytelling on theater stages. And so I'm telling stories from my life about sexual health and things that are important. I don't usually do these live videos and it's just from my living room. And so I noticed random things that I guess I do this when I'm just talking to people like normal and the phrase and things like that comes out of my mouth a lot. <laughs> I was watching the replay of the first video and I swear to God, I said that a million times. Uh, but yeah, let me go actually speaking of the video and things. I want to make sure that I remember to go to the live chat. So if you are in, I see a couple of you there. Drop a like and or drop a hi. Um, 
so that I can go and see that. Let me pull the actual chat up and then we'll continue talking. So porn, as I was saying, people are watching it, which is good. Uh, and I think it's an interesting kind of segue into talking about how interconnected our economy is. Because if you talk about just the number of people who are watching porn going up, then we have to talk about like who is actually producing it, who's recording it, who's appearing in the, like, these are all different industries. These are people who are participating in some way, right? And so you've got all of that, and it's so that I can go and see that. Do that. So yeah, so you've got all of that, which is great. And something else that's super, oh, here we go. Yes. All right, so we have that up. So you have all of that. And the other thing that's interesting about people watching more porn, you may know that a lot of the productions, just like our favorite shows, like 90 Day Fiance productions are shut down. They're not doing live production that includes porn. And so it's all kinds of ways in which different things are being shut down and being affected. Um, something else that I've been watching and just paying attention to as we continue just informally chatting about stuff that I've been noticing, uh, there's COVID-19 themed porn too, which is a completely different take. And you may be wondering what exactly is that? Um, I mentioned that to someone the other day and they're like, is it coughing or like are people <laughs> coughing more? And I was like, you know, and these are the things we laugh so we don't cry, right? Because it's like, we have very real things. I personally know people who've had aunts die, neighbors die, and other people who are like directly impacted by this. And some of the people who watch this video later, maybe you know people, or maybe you personally are afraid because you've got underlying conditions like asthma or allergies or things like that. So it's not so much that we are talking about these things in a, a light-hearted kind of way because it's unimportant. We're bringing joy into our lives because we fucking need it, right? Like one of the things that I did last summer with my show, which was called We're All Gonna Fucking Die <laughs> before the COVID-19, uh, was literally about how everyone's just like anxiety's off the roof, anxiety is through the roof, off the charts, people are scared, people are nervous about a lot of different things. And so I wanted to talk about how we actually, in the time, even amidst all of that, bring joy back to our lives. And so this is a much more informal way of doing that, of just like talking about stuff like that. So people are actually doing COVID-19 porn, and which is a different play on the doctor patient theme. And so they're bringing in some interesting messaging through that, but then also just kind of talking about sex through that. So I think that that's uh, something kind of cool to look at if you haven't and see what you think about it. Um, because, of course, we're not the kinds of people who watch this and make opinions about things before we've even seen them. And so I'm sure you are probably going to take a look at that after this. Um, hey, Kitty. Uh, dating. We talked about dating last time. And that was cool that some of you guys asked, some of you people, some of you wonderful humans, you wonderful love bugs, asked about like online dating. How are people doing that during COVID-19? And I put up a couple of slides to show y'all just images, different things that people had uh, put up. So I know that Hinge, for example, had told people, hey, people are up for a chat. So even though you can't meet up in person, because of course online dating is predicated on this idea that you're only talking online for a short amount of time and ideally you're going to go offline and meet that person. And so Hinge is encouraging people to do video chats um uh, which is good i believe and then other organizations that have online dating platforms like bumble have built in video chat functionality and chat functionality so you can chat with people directly there either video wise or via words which is good um so i love that stuff and then as we're talking about these online dating i actually had my first online virtual date which was really fun. I hadn't planned it at all. I was talking about all of these things and then I was like, okay, Cupid and okay, Cupid had said, if you are on this side, you probably have your parameter set up saying, I only want to actually date people who are in this specific geographic location. Because if you're in Los Angeles, you're probably not looking to hook up with someone who's in Alaska. And if you're in DC, like I am, then you're not necessarily looking to meet people who are in from Chicago, like where I'm from as wonderful as that city is. And so they said though, but at this time we're worldwide, everyone is home and everyone is interested in talking to other people. Why don't we just all like kind of take those limits off and just chat with whoever? So I did. 
And I had a very handsome Dutch gentleman reach out to me and ask me, hey, I see you mentioned that you speak Dutch. Why do you speak Dutch? That's kind of strange. And so I explained uh, why I learned Dutch, how I lived in the Netherlands, and everything else like that. And we ended up exchanging numbers on WhatsApp, and then we set up a virtual date on Zoom. And we just ended up talking for about an hour or so about all kinds of things. And what I found fascinating is when you're talking to someone online in a virtual date who you'll likely never meet, either virtually again or meet in person or both, it was oddly more, it was just easier to be just vulnerable and talk about different things about life and politics and love and how we came to the careers that we're interested in and just talk about Whatever, it's not this like application style thing where you try to figure out who this person is and kind of what if what they want is more aligned with what you want and all of that because that's really not the goal there. It's just two people talking about going through a very human experience at this time where everyone around the globe is going through the exact same thing. And so it was really interesting. So I highly recommend it uh, as I did last time. If you've not done it, go for it. Uh, and we only have eight minutes because I was late. I am so sorry. Every single time I do this, this being only the second time, uh, but every single time I do this so far, there's something else that snafus. And so they say three times a charm. And so we do this at 9 p.m. on Tuesdays. So tune in next Tuesday for the next one. And when I say we, I mean me personally, my neighbor. Woo! and my cats. <laughs> so we do this every uh, Tuesday and chat about it. So tune in next one where we will have figured it all out and it'll be perfect, which is of course not true. And that's actually something nice about COVID-19. Um, we all have the freedom to remember we're all just doing the best that we can in the situations that we've got. So that's what we're going to do. Okay. So last of it, something that came up last time in these final seven minutes uh, something that came up last time, people were super curious about toys. I can't even remember how toys came up, but we started talking about safe toys, body safe toys, how to buy them. And that's what it was. The fact that toy buying is through the roof, not just traditional toys that it's something that's typically insertable or that is skin to skin contact. Also a lot of the remote toys as well, because as you talk about physical distancing, one of the toys we gave away at my show this summer was remote controlled. Your partner has the remote, you are wherever you are, and your partner can touch different buttons and do different things um, to make the toy that's inserted in you or put near you or whatever uh, move, vibrate, whatever have you. So those have gone up in sales exponentially and exponentially in this time of physical distancing. So if you are interested in buying sex toys, uh, definitely check it out. I mean, all of the sites. Whatever you're looking for, especially remember that your local businesses, your small businesses in town, uh, you probably have a sex toy shop, a Babeland, a Lotus Bloom, or something, wherever you may be living. Lotus Bloom is here in D.C., Babeland, I think of New York in California predominantly, Chicago, I think it's Come As You Are, Toronto, I think it's Come As You Are, there's, there's a million of them. But there's so many different sex toy companies. There's women-owned, there's black-owned, there's small business everything you might possibly like. And so support these businesses and continue bringing pleasure into your life. So that is pretty much it. Any questions? Is there anything else? Like I said, next Tuesday we will have more. And I'm actually going to, now that I feel like I got over the first hump uh, of those uh, kind of bumps and errors and technical difficulties, and this is the second one, and I feel like I figured out a couple more. Um, I'm feeling pretty good. And so I feel like this whole third type of charm thing is going to be great. I'm actually going to like prepare in advance because I shit you not. What I do for these is around 840. I'm like, fuck, this is starting in like 20 minutes. I've got to get my shit together because like I said, we're all doing the best that we can. I run a business, as you know, we have two lines of business. There's the cultural strategies, digital marketing, like helping people who aren't specific. Some are in sexual health, reproductive health, but not all. We've done everything from uh, press freedom organizations, mass incarceration, all of this pulling on my marketing background. Because when baby was living in Manhattan, the bills had to be paid somehow. <laughs> so I had full-time job, marketing communications, and I've been working in marketing communications for a long time. So I had a job doing that. And the second line that I do is writing, teaching, speaking, 
all of publishing uh, books, articles about sexual reproductive health. So in running the business, it's working with clients on the digital side, and then the way that COVID-19 is directly impacted is speaking engagements. I was set up to speak at a couple of national conferences, campuses, uh, at one uh, professional organization um, that's actually based here in DC. It's national, but it's based here. All of these things, all of that's pushed off. Um, one of them pushed off as far as April of next year. And so in the midst of just doing the work of the work, running the business, filing for uh, stimulus package things that are helping small business stay afloat, um, and just keeping my sanity amidst being trapped inside of my house for week four of quarantine. Uh, doing everything that I can. So, because it shows me, I can see you all are here. It's not so um, creepy as to tell me exactly who you are, but I do see the number there. So I think that that's kind of fun. And I see the likes. So I appreciate that too. Thank you for that. So that's it. We're literally at around 930. And so we're a little bit short because the problems with the technical difficulties. Sorry about that. Next week, we're going to be on at 9 o'clock sharp. I believe it. And we're going to go until 930. So thank you all for coming. You know where to find me if you need me. And funky brown chick everywhere. So Twitter, Facebook, Insta, TikTok, here on YouTube, wherever. Find me, or Twana Hines, obviously, um, and sign up. And I'm going to push out a newsletter, which is way overdue as well. Uh, I will be pushing that out, so sign up if you haven't. And that's when I'm going to announce kind of what's going on for next week on that. Three times a charm. All right. Thank you, lovely humans. Have a fantastic rest of your week. Stay safe. Stay home. Stay sexy, stay enjoying all the times that you are with the people who you're enjoying with. And as I said the first time, and as a lot of public health officials are saying, you are your best sexual partner during this time. So have at it. Have fun.